Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at the experiment for charging a capacitor. So let's get into it. Before we look at the experiment for charging a capacitor, we just need to look at what is meant by an RC circuit, first of all. So it says here that an RC circuit is one containing both a resistor and a capacitor. So the R stands for resistance and the C stands for capacitance. So when a capacitor is connected in series with a resistor, it takes time to charge and discharge. And what we're going to do is investigate how the current in and potential difference across a capacitor changes over time for both the charging and discharging cycles. In this video, we're only going to look at the charging case and you'll see in the next video, we'll look at the discharging case. So let's say you want to carry out an experiment for charging of a capacitor. Well, the aim might be to observe the variation of current and potential difference with time for the charging cycle of a capacitor in an RC circuit. The method might look like this. So collect a 2200 microfarad capacitor, 10 kilo ohm resistor, ammeter, voltmeter, 4.5 volt battery and stopwatch. And then you want to set up the equipment as shown in this circuit diagram. So here we've got our 4.5 volt battery or power supply. We've then got a resistor and capacitor in series with an ammeter and we've got a voltmeter in parallel with the capacitor there. We've also got a switch here which can go between positions X and Y. So first of all, you'd want to set the switch to X and start the stopwatch. Now the reason we want the switch to be at X and not at Y is because this section of the circuit involves the battery. So if we want to charge the capacitor, we need to charge it up using the power source over here, the battery. So with the switch at X, we can charge up the capacitor and you'll see in the next video for discharging the capacitor, we actually move the switch to position Y where it no longer needs the battery. So once the capacitor has started charging, then you would start the stopwatch and then record values of current from the ammeter and potential difference from the voltmeter every 10 seconds starting at zero seconds until the measured potential difference becomes constant. And remember this will happen when the potential difference across the capacitor becomes equal to the potential difference of the supply. What you would do beforehand is create a table to record values of time, potential difference and current. And this means you could write down your values during the experiment. You would then plot scatter graphs for potential difference across the capacitor versus time and the current in the circuit versus time. And you would then want to draw curves of best fit through the plotted points. So for the charging capacitor case, what you would see for the potential difference across the capacitor against time is a graph which looks like this with a curve going up the way. Whereas for current in the capacitor or current in the circuit, because it's going to be the same due to being a series circuit, then for current against time, you're going to have a graph that looks like this with the curve that goes down the way over time. Let's say you connected the voltmeter across the resistor, however, to determine the variation of potential difference across it with time during the charging process, then the following graph would be obtained. So the potential difference across the resistor against time would give a graph that looks like this with a curve going down the way over time. And notice how this is actually opposite to the potential difference across the capacitor against time. And that is because if we look back at our circuit diagram here, remember the capacitor and the resistor are in series. So they are said to be in a potential divider circuit here. So if when we set the switch to X, the potential difference across the capacitor starts to increase over time, then because it's a potential divider circuit and these two are in series, then the potential difference across the resistor during charging must decrease over time because the capacitor is taking more of a share of this supply voltage. So what can we conclude? Well, it can be seen from the graphs above that during the charging process, the potential difference across the capacitor increases from zero up to a maximum value equal to the supply voltage Vs. We also saw that the current in the circuit decreases from an initial maximum value of Vs over R to zero. Now this just comes from Ohm's law, V equals IR, where if you rearrange for current, you get I equals V over R, where we can say the maximum current I max is equal to Vs over R, where Vs is the supply voltage. And the current is going to decrease to zero. And lastly, we also saw that the potential difference across the resistor will do the opposite to the capacitor, and therefore it decreases from the maximum value of Vs to zero. We're now going to explain why we got the these results. So firstly, at the instant the switch is closed at X, the capacitor is not charged. The potential difference across it is zero volts. Therefore, the potential difference across the resistor at this point is Vs, which is 4.5 volts in this specific example. As time passes, the potential difference across the capacitor increases. Therefore, the potential difference across the resistor decreases since it now receives a smaller share of the supply voltage. And I've said here to think potential divider circuits, which we said earlier. After a certain time, the capacitor will become fully charged. The potential difference across it will be 4.5 volts. The potential difference across the resistor at this time will be zero volts now. The resistance of the resistor in the circuit and supply voltage set the value of the maximum current which can flow. And this is calculated using our form of Ohm's law rearranged for the current, I max equals Vs over R. 
This will be handy when you do problems on this topic. Since the capacitor is in series with the resistor, the current through it will be the same as that through the resistor. As time increases, the potential difference across the resistor decreases, hence the current through it must also decrease by Ohm's law since voltage is directly proportional to the current for a fixed resistance at a fixed temperature. So just to help you visualise some of the graphs that we've seen, I'm going to show you a quick simulation. So here we've got a circuit diagram and set up similar to what's in the notes, and you can see the layout of the apparatus here. And what we can do is, say we have a 33 microfarad capacitor with a 150 kilo ohm resistor. So if we click play here to start charging the capacitor, you can see that the potential difference against time is going to increase over time, whereas the current against time is going to decrease over time. And remember the potential difference will reach a maximum value which is equal to the supply voltage and the current will decrease to zero when electrons can no longer flow in the circuit. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.